Hi, sir, and welcome to Vasily's Garden, folks. Now, I know we all have possum problems in the garden, inside, outside, front lawn, and even on the nature strip. Well, guess what? Today, we've come out to Frankston to meet Brian, who's going to give us some great tips on how to maintain your garden and look after the possums at the same time. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Eee, possum, 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 possum. Brian, how are you? I'm excellent. Thank you for coming and seeing my garden. Thank you. And seeing what the possums don't do in a suburban garden. Well, I'm excited to learn all about that because I come from a background, and I talk about a suburban background, where possums run havoc in the gardens. Now, we really have tried a lot of different methods, but before we go into that, tell me about your background. What's your background about? Well, I've been here for 26 years yep. and uh, really gardened heavily when I came here. I'm a nursery person by trade. Okay. Um, and uh, So you've got all that horticultural background. I have. Yes. Um, and always, like right from when I first started, when I was 16, people would come into the nursery, how do I get rid of the possums? Mm. How do I get rid of the bush rats? How do I get rid of the antichinus? How do I get rid of this? My lemon tree, my roses, etc. <laughs> yeah, well, husbands, no. 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 Um, okay. I'd, I'd just put them out in the garden <laughs> supply. The possums would have... A, a little feast of the fruit trees but we found that it was mainly the cockatoos and the rosellas that um, did the damage that did the damage um but because and they would come in early in the morning but because people could see the possum poo on the ground which they blame the possum they were blame okay. the possum i'm now a native wildlife carer um mm -hmm. i run a shelter here although oh. i have no animals at the moment and i i found over the years i've been doing it for 20 years um, a lot of people have said to me, but I've got possums here, I've got possums there. And I'd go out and I'd say, well, I'm sorry, but the scats or the poo is definitely not possum, it's rat. I heard you're a triple P. That's certainly right. Could we explain what that means? A passionate possum person. Uh, all your life. Yes. Yeah, so I asked you earlier about, when did you actually start having a passion for possums? And you said from the age of three? That's correct. Pretty much when you were born. Yes. Yeah, well, I was hatched. <laughs> OK. <laughs> no, we've, all, um, we've always had, the family has always had gardens. OK. Your grandfather had a garden too? He certainly did. Now, he was in Coburg, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. Now, what did he do to control the possums back then? Well, from an early age, all I can think of was that he had um, floppy wire fences. Okay. So the possums didn't like to to be on that, so didn't get into the vegetable gardens. So he was able to look after it that way. Yes, yeah. and like myself, he had a lot of trees, native trees, yeah. that the possums could eat. Okay. Um, so they need a food source as such. And now, in your garden here, like I'm looking around here, it's a courtyard garden. You've got a lot of flowering plants here. You've got roses here in particular, and they're in full bloom. Now, I haven't asked you the question directly. How many possums live with you? In this front garden, there would be, well, there's four boxes. Okay, um, so four possums? No, uh, seven ring tails in one box and three brush tails in the other boxes. The brush tails in the front are mothers because they've all got their babies, okay. although they're, they're kicking their babies out now. They're, they're big enough to, um, to go out by themselves. Out into this lovely garden oasis? Well... <laughs> well, do they actually travel past your property? Oh, certainly do. Oh, they do? Certainly okay. do. Yeah, and they come back at night? Or in the morning? They come back. They come back about four o'clock in the morning. I hear them come back. They, of course, jump on the roofs. They go across the road. Mainly, I think, why they don't ruin this garden is there's the native vegetation for them to to, Just eat. to feed off. Yes, yeah, so they don't need to have things that they're not used to eating. Yes. But in Coburg, now we've got lemon trees in the front yard, we've got camellias, roses growing there, we've got all sorts of beautiful flowering plants and they love to come in there and eat them all up. What are we doing wrong? You don't have enough native. Uh, you don't have enough bottle brush or the calistamins, the malaleucas. If you want flowering things, you, it, it's not native, but the bougainvillea. Yep. Um, well, they, they always could do with a good prune, can't it? They, they <laughs> certainly can. And, it, and it's also a safety net for them. Um, in case there's predatory uh, foxes or cats, they can hide in there. Now you can see I've got 
quite nice roses here. <laughs> and and that's very that's very low down. And there's a fence there. They can jump down. They can come down here and they can eat from here. But they don't. Because just behind me I've got a Ceanothus Blue Pacific. As you can see, they've stripped it. They're really, really stupid. <laughs> but it's what I call nature's pruning. That'll come back when they don't want to eat that. Just have a lot of different things. The butterfly, bush. The buddleias. Um, yeah, the buddleias, yeah. They love that. They do. Because yeah, they grow. And the thing is, with these sort of plants that you're referring to now, they actually grow quite fast. They bounce back straight away. So if you've got that sort of species growing in your garden, you don't have to worry about the pruning. Well, well that's fine. If you like Vasily's Garden, then you'll love the summer edition of Vasily's Garden to Kitchen magazine. Available at all good news agencies. Subscribe now at vasilysgarden.com. Hello folks and welcome. Well, chemo continues to be um, a particular aspect of treatment in modern medicine. But one of the effects is the consumers who are using it are finding great difficulty in having an appetite during the process. And often that is because nausea is a standard side effect of the treatment and often can't be avoided. But can we do something to help our folk out there? Well, yes, there is. Food as medicine comes to the rescue. Folk medicine at its best. Combination foods such as looking at a simple avocado, highly nutritious, highly nutritious, and it really is something that is not a difficult taste. It's quite neutral really, isn't it? It's what you put with it that will enhance it or not. But mashed avocado is a good starting point to get that appetite going, but also to soothe and protect the gut wall and to give some wonderful nutrition to the body to assist cellular recovery. If we combine some avocado and banana, put these together, like, uh, oh, hang on a minute, avocado and banana, really? Yes, because banana will override the taste of the neutral taste of the avocado. So banana and avocado is a wonderful combination to put together. But what about banana, avocado and some pear? These are all beautiful products, highly nutritious, easy to break down, and is going to support the body and at least give it the fuel that it needs to assist with the recovery of chemo. So functionally, when we're looking at all of these combinations, we can mix and match everything that we're doing, number one, or we can isolate them, number two, or three, just take out a few selections. Whichever you want to do, make sure that you use product that is not overpowering in its flavour and that it is easy to break down and easy to chew. These are very important aspects. So folks, until next time, find happiness in every moment and start supporting your family friends who may be on chemo to get that appetite moving. So what about wind chimes and little fairy lights and the, the scent that people hang up in the gardens? And I've tried some of that stuff. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. Most times it doesn't. What do you think? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, they don't, it, it doesn't work. Even sensor lights after a certain period of time don't work. Um, I, I, well, we know they don't work, because yeah. if you buy the cheap ones, that's for sure. <laughs> yes. But you're referring to possums not being yes. affected by them. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, not, they're not affected by them. Is there a deterrent that you can recommend? That's oh. not harmful to the possums, obviously, because we all love them, don't we, folks? Yes, we do. And they are a protected species. <laughs> okay. They are. We, we came into their territory a long time ago, so we, we have to live in harmony with them. Yeah, we do. Um, that's I've why we tried... all own barbecues. Yep. <laughs> right, <Rotisseries>. Oh, your um, preferred method? Okay. <laughs> I'll take that. I have tried, and in many gardens, dynamic lifter. Okay. Um, in, in a stocking, just a hung? small... Yes, hung. A, in, say, a normal uh, size lemon tree or fruit tree, when it's fruiting properly, uh, not, not when it's just starting to fruit, and you hang it in the tree, um, and you probably... Change it every three days. Also, naphthalene flakes or, yep. or camphor done in the same way. So that stockings, works. stockings. Yeah, get your stockings out. <laughs> Once you've used them for fishing to keep the leeches off, use them for your possum protection. But the main thing is just 
keep the water up for them. Um, okay, they need water. Oh, definitely. Your birds during the day. I also have tawny fog mouths um, in the back here. Uh, yeah. They fly in of a night. Also, um, just any of the birds. So refresh your water bowls um, just Regularly. before you go to bed at night. Keep keep them clean. It's something that the kids can do. And keep your um, water in bird baths um, or up in the trees because you don't want the possum coming down onto the ground. Okay. Don't leave your dog or your cat food out or your chook food out or your bird seed out. Put it inside for the night because they they will come in, they're scavengers. They'll come in for anything they can eat. And if there's something that they say, oh, this is really easy, yeah. it's like the, um, Goldilocks and the three bears. So you wouldn't set up a little feasting corner for them like in that corner over there, for example, and you put a couple of bowls of food there every day just to deter them from going anywhere else. You'd rather plant some native trees where they can feast off that and take away anything else that's easy to get to. They only uh, tip prune my camellias um, in early September. Could we call you a possum whisperer? Well, I think so. Uh, uh, well, a, well, a PP, a possum protector. Possum protector. Yes. So can everybody else bring their possums here? No, they can't. Why not? We've got to keep the species. <laughs> we've got to keep the species perfect. So I rescue. <laughs> we haven't done that with a human race, so no. we've already met some possums. Okay. <laughs> um, with my work as a native wildlife carer, I rescue the possums, find okay. out exactly where they come from. Yep. Uh, note that down. Um, they all have cards, like in little hospital cards. Okay. Um, Are they tagged too, by any chance? No, no. <laughs> no we, never, we never tag them. Okay. The best way to look after your plants is with Vasili's Easy Hand Spray. Order your sprayer now, available only at vasilisgarden.com. Hi guys, summer has finally arrived and we all know how important it is that we keep hydrated during those hot summer days. And it's just as important that we keep up our vitamin and mineral intake as well. So why not make a quick and easy juice that will give you both a burst of energy and keep you hydrated. In this week's juice, I'm including one cup of chopped watermelon. It is a powerful liver cleansing food and is 92% water, so it will help keep you hydrated. Watermelon also helps ease muscle soreness and reduce heart rate, and will certainly provide you with plenty of energy because of its whopping amount of minerals and electrolytes. Next, I have one lemon. It has good alkalizing properties, also has a really good source of dietary fiber and can assist with weight loss. Eating the skin of a lemon can help with respiratory problems and support optimal health. Next, I have one red radish. This wonderful vegetable regulates digestion. It's a fantastic cleanser for the kidneys. It keeps the body hydrated and maintain healthy moisture levels in the skin. And the rest of the ingredients are a handful of lightly steamed broccoli and two medium cucumbers. Smoothies and juices are a great way of adding ingredients that you would otherwise not eat on their own. And by combining them with other nutritious ingredients that you do like is a great way to have them. Using a Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer will ensure that you not only receive all these nutritious benefits, but also get to enjoy a great tasting juice. Wow, this has definitely got some powerful flavours. So if you like a kick in the taste buds, then this will sure do it. For more other great recipes, visit our Facebook page or our website at vasiliesgarden.com. See you next time. Possums, they eat the top out of the mulberry well, here. They can eat a bit on the bottom too, if you ask me. Yeah, Have a look at these trees. We certainly have plenty here, and it's flowering at the moment. It's got its little, little oh. flowers on it. Flowers? You mean fruit? Oh, fruit, Oh, yes. I just fell. What about other pets? Other pets. I have um, I have two dogs, uh, two small dogs that give the uh, possums a run for their money mm -hmm. um, to make them scoot up the tree. Mm -hmm. So they know they know and a noisy bird. They know not to come down on the ground because ground is not where where they should be. So they're best up in the tree, obviously. Well, they are. Yeah, or along the fence lines or power lines. Yeah, power lines. <laughs> that's their highways. We put those in. I know one thing about possums is they don't like a lot of noise. 
Does that work? <laughs> no talkback radio like 3AW, Neil, Neil Mitchell? No, I don't. No. 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 You should try it, it works. Well, yes. <laughs> um, I've had I've had many a garden party out here at night and I've still had the possum sitting up there going, well, you know, where's my hand out? In actual fact, you're right about that because I've been in some public gardens where I've seen possums scurry down the tree and run across to the other tree. And if they have a band around, the, the possums can't get back up there again, so that's a bit of a problem there. Now, when they are up in the trees, do they just like to live in the tree? Because I see you've got possum boxes everywhere here. Yes, I've got, I've got seven boxes um, in this garden. S wait, that's seven boxes. On average, how many possums in a box? One brush tail to each box, ring tails can be anywhere between five and seven. Ringtails are family orientated, brush tails are solitary. So you prefer a ringtail living with you? Um, no. I, I, love, I love both of them. <laughs> Folks, Christmas is around the corner and we have been promoting, leading up to it, a $5,000 Christmas card I have that you could win. Now, to be a part of it, you needed to sign up as a VIP member, which gives you lots of benefits. Wholesale rights online. You get back issues of the magazine. You also get all the TV shows from the past years that we've been producing. Now, it's time to draw the winner. We've got a barrel here. Well, it's actually a black root here. 18 kilos technology and we're still pulling it out of a bucket, folks. Thousands of entries and thank you very much. And we have a winner, Pauline Castle. Congratulations. We're going to give you a call right now. Pauline, we've got to keep drawing. Hello, is this Pauline? Hello, is this Pauline? Yep. Hello, Pauline, this is Vasily. How are you? Hi. You well? How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Great. That's, That's great. Now, you signed up for the VIP membership? Yep. That's it. Now, you know you went into the draw automatically for the Christmas hamper prize? Yeah. Well, guess what? Oh, what? You are the winner. $5,000 worth of garden products coming your way. <laughs> Are you excited? I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> That's Absolutely. Oh, I'm so glad for you. That's it. Well, oh, congratulations. Yeah, you're welcome. Congratulations. Having, Go on. We're having a major clean-up in the garden, so it couldn't come at a better time. Well, you're going to enjoy it. There's lots of gardening products, uh, fertilisers, organic fertilisers, insecticides, <laughs> garden tools, and obviously all the books and magazines to go with it too. So you're going to have an endless amount of time and fun time, that is, in the garden enjoying yourself. <gasps> Congratulations. <laughs> oh, that's so wonderful. Thank you so much. Cheers. You have that's a good day. Me. I never <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. You. Have a good Thanks evening. So See you later. Thanks. Bye-bye. Well, there you go, folks. A happy customer there. Nice winner. $5,000 Christmas garden happened. So stay tuned, folks, because we're going to be announcing a major prize for each season. You've got to be in it to win it. So sign up today. From Eva Silly, Maresi. Who would have thought that you could have possums and a garden at the same time? Well, you can I see it all here. I didn't believe it until I came here, folks, because all your plant life is thriving here. You've got a couple of trees here, now. there's maybe a bank here, that's been, but that's not even been pruned too much, that bank here. It's just had a bit of a tip prune there. It certainly has. So it all works. Now, for everybody else at home who still doubts what you've said, now I know there's a few out there who are going to say, well, you should come and see my garden, it's been destroyed. What are some basic tips? Let's recap on those that people can do and try in their garden to control possums and deter them from eating their plant life. Put in the native, native plants that they desire. The Callistamon bottle brush, um, the Melaleucas, Ceanothus. You can have your beautiful banksias. Um, you can have a lot of different native yeah. vegetation. Go for a walk in your, in your suburb, in your street, and have a look at what's not being eaten if you really have a problem. If you've got your fruit trees, your fig trees, Cover them, but cover them properly right at the start of the season, not at fruiting time. Um, and make sure that around the bottom is secure. 
You can use, which I've had success with in some gardens, naphthalene flakes or, or camphor um, in small um, stockings. parcels in your stocking. Um, you can use dynamic, dynamic lifter. Change it every three days so because they don't like harsh smell. They get um, used to a soft smell, but the harsh is what deters well, them. Well, that's correct. Don't leave your dog and your cat food out. Keep your water, which, which is essential for all animal life, keep your water up off the ground. Don't throw at the end of the night your scraps out on the back lawn because that's only going to attract them. Think of the Goldilocks and the Three Bear principle. The door was open, Goldilocks went in and ate uh, the bear's porridge. So yeah, I'm really simplifying it, but that, that's the type of thing. If you leave your door open, people will come in and eat from your table. So just, just, be, care just be careful. I'll be back in a sec. Door's open, isn't it? It is. Thank you. So it, it's a matter of if you do have a really bad problem, they're getting in your roof, have a look where their, where their entry point is, their exit point. You, when people say to me, oh, I've got possums in my, in my roof, the, the thing is that they might be in your roof, but you'll find that you've got a hole somewhere. So it's the door principle. Okay, uh, so we lock the doors, clear the, the grounds of any scraps of food, yes. raise the water up higher for them, and uh, put a possum house if you like, and plant some large native trees. Well, well that's... And hang some poo? Yeah, <laughs> hang, hang some poo Hang some poo up that tree. Or naphthalene or, balls. Or naphthalene plague. But just watch out with the kids with the naphthalene. Yeah. Um, but... Well, that's pretty cool. I like all that advice. I hope it all works for you folks. So if you have got a possum problem, send us an email. Tell us what's going on. Maybe a couple of photos as well. You'll yes. be happy to help us with that? I certainly will. There would. you go, the possum lady. The possum whisperer, possum passion person. I am. Got it right. Thank you very much. Thank it was you. It a pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm.